Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone, to the show. Great to have you here today. Love being able to talk about all things, whether it be intermittent fasting, whether it be exercise, looking at the physiology of the body and how we perform better as human beings. And one of the things that are on a lot of people's minds, or at least there's a lot of talk about it on social media and a lot of expert-based articles, is how to become more fat adapted or how to tap into burning more body fat. And I don't think that there's anything wrong per se with the want of burning more fat as fuel. But what the problem is that there's been a a lot of miseducation out there. So people are saying, well, if you fast, you're going to tap into more fat as fuel. And that is actually not necessarily the case. I just simply want to share with you the physiology behind how our bodies work. And then you get to decide if you're actually tapping into more body fat or not, because you have the knowledge, not just because someone out there said it, but actually you have the knowledge as to how much we burn as fat as a percent of fuel during any given day's activity. And again, by the end of the show, you will know this beyond a shadow of doubt. You'll also know the three energy systems of the body, and you'll know that only one of those energy systems really allows for carbohydrate or fat burning. So let's get into all of that right now. Today is episode 2259. So if you want to go to any of the research, if you want to look at any of the uh, past notes on this show and the three takeaways that I always leave for every show, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2259. Now, I said this is basically a three-part series. Last week, we started it with episode 2252, uh, the internal, uh, let's see. No, it was on episode 2253. So we'll link them up uh, today at episode 2259. That's the only one you need to remember. And there'll be one more next week on the fat adapted myth explained. So I'm going to bring it all together over three shows. Really simple, really straightforward. Let's dive in. So the first thing we want to understand is that there's three energy systems of the body. Three, all right? So if we look at these three energy systems of the body, we can better understand when our body is burning more fat as a fuel, as fuel and when it can't be burning more fat as fuel, and then how it breaks down in each one of those. So if we're looking at the three energy systems of the body, the first one, you're not in it very much at all during the day. That's probably a good thing because it's quite a strain on the body. So it's called the anaerobic alactic system of the body, and this is how we are using basically no oxygen, no lactic acid. So this is basically alactic, it's without oxygen, it's without lactic acid as a fuel source, and instead you're using something called ATP. You might have heard of ATP before. It's coming from those mitochondria inside your cells, adenosine triphosphate. Really important that we're able to make a good amount of ATP, and the better function our mitochondria are, the more energy we can produce from them, especially in these instances where we need more ATP and one other item called creatine phosphate. Now, why do you need this energy system body? This is true, basically, fight or flight, or this is true all-out exertion. That's the best way to think about it. This is activities where it's a max effort for about 10 seconds. That's it. So think of like your personal best in weightlifting, you're at the end of your high intensity interval uh, in some type of resistance-based workout, you are doing bike sprints, Uh, sprinting in general is going to get you to that creatine phosphate-based system where there's no time for your body to burn fat as a fuel. So again, I talked about this. I'm not going to get too deep into it because I went over it on last show. So again, if if this is new to you, I'm going to link up the previous shows to look at as well. And again, that was last week over at uh, 2253. But again, I don't want to confuse things. So let's do this. Episode 2259, everything will be there. Just head over to that one link. All right, so this is a very important process of the body. We're going all out with exercise, but we're actually burning very little fat at all as a fuel source during that anaerobic, a lactic-based 
energy system, the body. All right, so that's all out max effort, about 10 seconds worth of total uh, fuel that you have to be able to power through. And then you need to take a break. You need to take a rest because it's an all out effort. Think about like the end of your Tabata, right? That last few seconds. All right, the next energy system, it's not too far away from this high intensity short bout, but it's more from medium intensity to high, medium to high, not not high to all out, right? Not high to 100% effort, like 90 to 100%. This is more medium intensity. Let's say it's like 80 to 90%, all right? This is the anaerobic lactic energy system. This is the glycolysis that I talk about a lot of times when I'm talking about, are you burning fat as fuel? And again, the answer is gonna be not so much. And then when we're in this fast glycolysis, we're in this stress-based state, we're not gonna be using as much fat for fuel, why? Well, the reason is this, is that our body is not able to break down fat at a fast enough rate in order to provide our body with enough energy to complete that given exercise or that given activity. So this is short bouts of activity as well. However, these bouts typically will last anywhere from, let's say, 30 seconds to 90 seconds. I found that you can push this a bit. Again, it, obviously, it depends on the individual, but let's say it's definitely under two minutes of work. So if you're really going all out or you you know you work you can't say all out right cuz all out you'd be 20 seconds or less of work right you'd be in that um, anaerobic electric based threshold this is all out for about 90 seconds. So if you think about this, this would be like maybe a quarter mile sprint for a lot of people. You're gonna get into that anaerobic lactic based system. This is your, your body's using lactic acid and it's in what's called a form of glycolysis, right? So it's fast glycolysis. There are different forms of glycolysis uh, where you're maxing out under two minutes of work. All right, but again, when you're in this energy based system, not burning a whole lot of fat. So just think about this. The whole point of this is the more you're stressing your body, the less it's burning fat as a fuel. All right. So think about that. The higher the heart rate goes, or the more stress you're putting on the body, more strain in terms of getting that heart pounding produced and not even just heart pounding, but actually putting the body under maximal tension. That is how you're moving away from more fat burning and actually more to these other energy systems that are built within the body, uh, more from either lactic acid or it is uh, with oxygen to a certain degree, then with glucose, with sugars and ATP as well. Okay. So now you say, well, there, there has to be a form of uh, energy where we're actually burning more body fat or even carbohydrates, and that is, that's more of the aerobic-based energy system. So the aerobic-based energy system is basically saying, okay, we're not doing an activity right now where we would burn out in under two minutes. Okay, so and this is allowing us more for like a steady state-based workout. It's also why there's pros and cons. I always tell people of doing a boot camp-ish type class is that if you can just keep going for the entire entire hour or 45 minutes, you're not really pushing your metabolism and your body to get into that anaerobic based threshold to a higher degree. So I'll talk about that in just a moment because there's a little caveat to that. But this aerobic based system is actually, or it's aerobic meaning with oxygen, is that you're going to be able to burn more fat as a fuel source. And what I want to do is make this really easy. And I'm going to go through the different activities where you're burning more fat as a fuel predominantly. So again, when people tell you that, oh, you know, you want to become more fat adapted, so you're burning fat all day long, you have to understand is that that's a little bit of a misnomer. I know that no one's saying it with ill intention, but it's just not necessarily true. You're always going to burn fat as a preferred fuel source if your body is actually metabolically balanced, hormonally balanced. So really what people are saying is to become fat adapted, yes, intermittent fasting is part of it, but it's actually saying, or your hormones balanced enough, that includes your insulin, that includes your cortisol, that includes your thyroid, as saying, are you metabolically balanced enough to burn fat when you're supposed to be burning fat at these times that we'll go over right now? So that's the thing. And like You have to understand that it has nothing to do, intermittent fasting is a great way to be able to take, uh, take into account fat burning, but... Um, you're able to do that all day long as long as your hormones are balanced, right? And here's why. Okay, so let's get into it. So when you are at rest, think about this. 
So your body is sleeping overnight or you're just seated. And, and even right now, even though I'm seated, I'm still speaking. So I'm a little bit away from that complete rested state. But when you are rested, you're burning about, again, these are approximations. It's going to obviously vary per individual, more of the endomorph type, you're going to actually get more into the fat burning. And if you're more of the uh, Vata ectomorph type, you're going to get more in the glucose burning. I know that may not make sense, but I, I chatted about it a little bit last week. I'll go over it just briefly today. We have to understand is that people that are, have a faster metabolism, that they lean more towards the sympathetic nervous system. They're actually going to burn more glucose. They're going to run through more glucose than they are fat. So you might say, well, that doesn't make any sense because they're typically leaner. They're not gaining as much weight. And I would say to you, that is correct. Absolutely. Their body is actually breaking down their glucose that they need at a faster rate using that as fuel as well as all as well as the calories they are putting into their system right so here's why because their body is burning more calories overall on a daily basis. You can look at two people and uh, literally, one they might both be 5'8", one's 180 pounds, one's 140 pounds. Okay, they're both 5'8", one's 180, one's 140. Let's say the 140 pounder is an ectomorph fata and the other one's an endomorph uh, kapha. Again, it is what it is. These are just constitutions and body types. All right, well, the 140 pounder might be eating 2,500 calories a day and the 180 pounder is eating like 1,500 or calories a day, yet they still weigh 40 more pounds. Why is that? It has everything to do with metabolism and very little to do with becoming fat adapted. Again, it is about getting that metabolism stoked, and the ectomorph has a faster metabolism for reasons that I've spoke about on previous shows. They are burning more f fat and sugar as fuel. They're burning way more calories overall uh, than, the, than the endomorph counterpart, even though they weigh less. And the reason is, again, they weigh less because they also have a, a much faster metabolism. Okay. Okay, but I digress. Let's get back to the topic at hand. So here's the thing. When you're at rest, you're burning about 80% fat for fuel and about 20% glucose or sugar or carbs, however you want to look at it. Don't think of burning protein at all. Protein is being used to refuel the system, repair the system. It can be used as a sugar as needed. It can be broken down as a carbohydrate uh, as needed. So let's look at it this way. When you're basically totally at rest, you're burning about 80% fat and about 20% uh, sugar. And the reason why I'm like half, I'm, I'm like holding back a little bit of a, a chuckle here is because you're actually most fat adapted when you're sleeping. Right, that, that's the thing. It's like you're, you're really fat adapted while sleeping at rest. The greatest percentage, now not the most calories burned, but the greatest percentage is coming from fat when you're at completely at rest, right? So if you really wanted to become super fat adapted, you would just sleep all day long, right? But again, that's, uh, that's I'm doing a little tongue in cheek here, uh, but that is the time of the greatest percentage of fat as fuel. Now again, it's also why we say if you don't have balanced blood sugar, you're gonna have a difficult time tapping into fat as fuel being fat adapted uh, if um, as, as to someone else who has balanced blood sugar. So again, it comes back to metabolic hormones rather than just intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting matters. It's super important. It can help with metabolic balance, but taken too far, um, especially a lot of intermittent fasting during the day, it can actually harm hormones as well because it can spike cortisol. It can lower thyroid. And I've, I've chatted about this as well. And that spiking of cortisol can also increase insulin. And, and certainly if it's not well-timed, we don't want that as well. All right. Now, the next thing, again, how can you, and this is something that we love to give our wellness clients. We like it for all people. It helps move the lymphatic system. And we definitely give it to people uh, who want to become more fat adapted and also help better balance blood sugar. And that's walking. And that's, here's why. 70% uh, is coming from fat as a fuel source and 30% from carbohydrates. Now, again, I hear everybody saying, but high intensity interval training boosts the metabolism. I totally understand. I get it. I, I I'm with you. Again, I'm with you on this. But if you're looking to burn more fat as fuel, right, and ba better balance blood sugar, I can tell you right now, I've seen in a clinical setting, people that do steady state cardio, which is my next one, and walking actually bring their blood sugar back to balance uh, at a, a median level better than high intensity interval training. Why? Because you're tapping into the glucose that's needed. You can't tap into it in that anaerobic based threshold. So you could 
when you're coming back down, you can, and that's why high intensity interval training can be so great. But again, most people that are metabolically imbalanced are already overly stressed. And by doing high intensity interval training, you're greater stressing the nervous system. And that includes cortisol, which may then drive down thyroid, especially in women. Okay. So Walking can absolutely be great. Get your 10,000 steps a day. I mean, the truth is, it's absolutely amazing. Everybody should be doing it. You need to work up to it, but definitely do that. The next is cardio, steady state cardio. Again, I rode steady state cardio off from like 1996 to 2006, and probably even a little bit longer than that. And, and the reason I did is because my job was to help people transform their body in the fastest way humanly possible. That was it. That was like literally my job. Here's the nutrition plan. Here is the exercise plan. This is what we're going to do. And we're going to do it. And we did it really well. We did that really well. We were able to get people just results when they never thought that they'd be able to get those results again. And, and we did it without any steady state cardio. But then I increased my knowledge base. I opened my mind and I realized that there's more to life than body transformation right? There's more to life than that. There's also being a healthy individual. And there's also more to life than being in your 20s and early 30s. Once you start to get up a little bit further in age, you need that cardiovascular balance to also balance the anaerobic base work, which is your more of your resistance training, right? So now we have the aerobic base work, which is great for oxygenation of the body, great for circulation, great for blood sugar balance. And again, you're tapping into a good amount of body fat. So nothing wrong with that. Again, bodybuilders have known this for a long time too. They would do fasted cardio in the morning. I've got lots of podcasts on fasted cardio. If you want to check those out as well, you can always search them at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. And if you ever can't find a podcast, uh, Michelle's amazing. If you want to ask over at Cabral, supportgroup.com. She's able to find all of those podcasts as well. All right. Cardio, about 60%. Again, it will vary anywhere from 50 to 70%, but it just, it depends on your baseline of exertion. The more you exert yourself, remember, the more you exert yourself, the less you're burning in terms of body fat. So steady state cardio, about 60, 40. Again, tapping into more body fat than your glucose levels. And for a lot of people, this could be a big benefit. I know there's going to be a lot of people who try to twist this show uh, into what it's not. This is a benefit for those people that are truly looking to better balance their overall metabolic hormones and understand that there's a lot of misinformation being spread in the space. I'm just trying to balance it out. You already know the other side. Let's listen to both sides of the argument, right? All right, body weight training. So this is now starting to exert yourself, but it's not between really the the three and eight reps, right? You're, you're probably closer to the 15 reps, maybe 20 reps or so with body weight exercises, sometimes even more. It's about a 50-50 split. So you're not overexerting yourself maybe until that last, you know, five seconds or so. You're, you're really doing a circuit of exercises, and that circuit may even take three to five minutes. So you're working more towards maximal exertion, but nowhere near it, right? Because you can do a five-minute circuit, maybe of five different exercises, um, but you're getting a nice split. You're getting some of the anaerobic work, and you're getting some of the aerobic work. And you know you're getting some aerobic work because you can go for more than 90 seconds, right? All right, so that's a big part of it. Now, as we start to get to higher intensity interval training, or we start to get more towards uh, maximal exercise weightlifting, we're getting more towards that third, like one third carbohydrates and now more on the glucose end of it because simply put, glucose is a faster fuel source than oxidizing or breaking down body fat and fatty acids. It's just a faster fuel source and that's the bottom line. So again, the reason why I did this show here today, and let me just add the last part. So again, and then you don't really drop too much low below that. And the reason is that As you start to, uh, with this high intensity interval training, tap more into glucose and then eventually like no oxygen and then using the ATP and creatine phosphate part of the system. Okay, now you're you're basically just working on like uh, the fumes, right? You're working on uh, the reserves and you're not really tapping into the same level of fuel. Now, it's still great for your metabolism. Don't get me wrong. I've... I mean, over 300 training podcasts on this, uh, but I just want you to know that you're really moving away from the carbohydrates and fats fuel source of your body in general. Okay, so the reason why I did this show here today is just to show you that in terms of human physiology, our human physiology is well known in terms of how we burn fuel, right? So if someone's trying to say, oh, well, you need to become more fat adapted during the day. Well, you're already fat adapted during the day, okay? When you are essentially not eating at that moment. Um, And even when you are, to be honest with you, let's take eating out of the equation. During the day, if you're just at your desk and 
and you're just kind of moving around, walking around, you're still burning 70 to 80% of your fuel from fat. And you might say, well, how is that possible? Because I start keep starting to add fat. Well, that's what I'm going to talk about more next week, right? Because your body takes the calories that you're not using and it stores them as fat, right? So you can be burning fat, but you can actually be storing more fat. More on that next week as we start to pull everything together. But just understand that you are fat adapted due to the exercise and exertion you are putting your body through. More exertion, less body fat burning. Again, you can boost your metabolism, not just through stress, but through specific exercises, yes, right? But the less exertion, believe it or not, the more percentage of fat that you're tapping into. So we do our workouts for maybe 30 to 60 minutes a day, great. Maybe we do a sauna for a little time, that's exertion of the body, that works too. Fantastic. But the rest of the time, you're burning fat predominantly as a fuel source. I'm just throwing that out there. That is exactly how it works. And if you're not tapping into as much body fat as you would like, it is a metabolic hormonal issue. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. All right. We'll be talking about that more next week. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. I appreciate you. If this was helpful, please let me know in the comments, right on YouTube, right on Instagram. Uh, I appreciate your feedback, feedback and happy to answer your questions. Thanks everyone. Take care and talk with you soon. Ever wonder what the best sauna, blue blockers, sleep trackers, wake lights, salt lamps, or other health gadgets are? Or what about the top non-toxic mattresses, sheets, soaps, bath products, toothpaste, and cookware? Or would you like to know the cleanest choices for hemp parts, meal delivery services, supplements, and much more? I personally curated, researched, and now created a resource page of all of my top picks that continues to grow each week. These are the exact products I use in my own life, with my family, in my private practice, and they're the ones I trust. To find out all of my up-to-date recommendations and all the details, simply head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash resources.